Hi, my name is Scott and welcome to my very small and new to me shop. Today I'm going to be making a firewood rack and I'm going to get started by cutting down some of these 2x4s. After cutting down all the parts, including the four legs, two rails, four braces, and five cross pieces using a circular saw and a 90 degree guide, I can start cutting the four mortises in the legs with the panta router. Then I can shape the four tenons on both ends of the two rails to fit in those mortises. You can see that I try to reverse direction as I reach the tenon shoulder to make a climb cut on the first pass around the shoulder. This prevents tear out on the shoulder and leaves a very crisp edge. Even though this was the largest setting on the taper on the tenon portion of the template, I made the mortise portion of the template too large, and this resulted in somewhat of a loose fit. It's no big deal as it's tight enough to be adequately strong. I took the time to fix this for the next eight mortise and tenons that I'd be cutting for the corner braces. I had some 16th inch maple veneer that I guesstimated to be the right thickness, so I proceeded to cut a narrow strip to line the inside of the mortise template with. After it was glued together, I sanded it flush, remounted it, and cut the eight mortises on the legs and rails for both ends of the four corner braces. I'm not going into too much detail on the panta router on purpose. I've left some links in the description if you need more information. Here's where I ran into the second problem in the build. As I was cutting the 45 degree tenon on the corner of the braces, the extra length of the corner created a longer than necessary portion of the tenon that would intersect with the collet of the chuck before the bit even reached the tenon shoulder, which you can see my pencil mark here. The simplest solution was to cut the corners off the braces before cutting the tenons, which was something I should have done and anticipated before trying to cut the tenons. Then I can cut the complete tenon and cut the remaining seven. I used the largest setting on the taper on the tenon portion of the template, and the tenon was more predictably too large for the mortise. After a few adjustments, I got the fit I was looking for. I decided I was using the router to remove too much waste, so I marked off the larger chunks and removed them at the bandsaw. Here's a little preview of how the corner brace meets the long rail and the rail and brace meet the leg, which is on the bottom of the screen here. So with two legs joined to one rail, this is what one side of the firewood rack looks like. And without any glue, it's still pretty strong. Oh. Oh, hold your balance. Ride the wave. Ride the wave. Yep. Don't face plant. Now I cut the joinery for the two top cross pieces that will cap the parallel legs and tie them together. The cross pieces have a half by one inch triple mortises on each end. The top of each leg receives the corresponding triple tenons. These are so satisfying to make. If you're contemplating making the wooden panta router or buying the metal panta router, just do it, if for no other reason, because it's as fun to use as it looks. You can see that there is a slight misalignment here. This is caused by the template not being perfectly parallel to the table of the panorouter. router. This is one of the shortcomings of the panorouter. router. It's very precise in most aspects, but any angle that the template has with the table will be multiplied by two. For example, if there's a two degree difference in the template and the table, the mortise and tenon will actually be four degrees off. I try and combat this by using a digital angle finder, which works well most times. 
But in this case, I neglected to tighten the template down properly and the template was moving and I just didn't notice right away. I ended up using a chisel off camera to adjust the tenons so that they lined up nice and perfect. This is one of the three cross pieces that connect the two rails together. They each receive the same triple tenon on each end. When I cut the second tenon on the same piece, I like to use a stop block to reference the opposite tenon's shoulder. This ensures the same shoulder to shoulder length on every single part. A consistent shoulder to shoulder length is far more important than the overall length of the piece. This is really handy when you're doing frame and panel construction. Even though I'm using SPF construction lumber, I still want to do my best to keep it from rotting. The firewood rack will sit under the eave of a roof, so it's okay, but I wanted to protect the bottoms of the legs from moisture wicking up and rotting over time. So I created some little walls with painter's tape and I poured a thin layer of epoxy. After curing, I can flatten the sharp ridges with my edge sander. Here's a full dry assembly. As you can see, it's quite strong without any glue holding it together. I wanted to try draw boring tenons. I've never done this before. The main reason is that to glue the rails to the legs, I'd need clamps over eight feet long and my longest clamps aren't even half that length. I started by marking and drilling two evenly spaced holes through each mortise using a quarter inch brad point bit. Then I can insert the corresponding tenon into the mortise, making sure that it's fully seated, and using the same brad point bit, mark where the hole intersects the tenon. I can then drill the holes in the tenon cheek, but making sure to drill about a sixteenth inch closer to the tenon shoulder. It's this offset between the mortise and tenon holes that will pull the joint tight together. I bought some 36 inch long quarter inch diameter dowel rod and I cut them down using my way too coarse resaw blade on my bandsaw. And I tapered one end of the dowels with a pencil sharpener. And now to the glue up. I'm using polyurethane construction adhesive because I need it to be waterproof and I need it to have a long open time as there's 42 mortise and tenons on this thing. If you look really close here, you can see the shoulder gap closing and glue squeezing out as I drive home the dowels.
To further protect the legs from moisture, I laid some patio stones in the ground to make sure it's not standing in the mud. And now it's time to load it up and get rid of the firewood that's been sitting on the ground for years. So this is my first YouTube video, and if you could be so kind, click that thumbs up button to let me know that you liked it so I know to make more videos. I'm going to do my darndest to try and keep them rolling, maybe once a month for now. Next time I'm going to be restoring this really old and unique 30 centimeter wide German jointer, or should I say, Hobel Machine. So please be one of those early adopters and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss that beast. Also, I'm planning on being the next Macromona, so you can brag to your friends in a couple years that you were one of my very first subscribers. She's not pretty, but it does the job very well, and I'm confident the joinery will last as long as the wood lasts. Thanks for watching.